What's up everybody, hello and welcome to Not Your Average Meta, an MTG Commander channel dedicated to bringing you decks and commanders you wouldn't normally find in your average meta. This week's video is brought to you by our channel sponsors International MTG on TCG Player, as well as Martin from the Hobby Horse. We've also started a new Discord channel which is free to join so come hang out with us. Link in the description of this video. On this week's episode of Not Your Average Meta, we've got yet another fun game that we recorded down at the Hobby Horse. This week's game features Patrick back playing the spell slinging dinosaur Calamax the Stormsire, Ryan returning playing his new Atrada Deadly Fugitive Assassins deck, Fallgirl playing his 1 1 Power Toughness Matters deck being led by Best Soul Nourisher, and Foil once again trying to protect his winning streak playing Mishra Tamer of Makfawa. Now that we're fighters, let's step into the Thunderdome and see which deck will come out on top. Turn 1, Ryan plays a tapped Shipwreck Marsh while Fog plays a tapped Arctic Treeline. Foil plays a tapped Cinder Barons and Patrick plays a tapped Steam Vents. Ryan plays a Swamp for turn and pays 2 for a pair of Lightning Greaves while Fog plays a Command Tower for turn paying 2 for a Farseek. Fog then goes into his library to find a land while he passes his turn to Foil who plays a Prismatic Vista for turn before paying 1 life to crack in order to also get a land from his library. Fog then plays a Tap Surveilling keeping the card on top of his library with Foil casts a Cranial Plating. Patrick just plays a mountain for turn before passing to Ryan, who plays an island before tapping out in order to cast his commander, Atrada. He then equips Atrada with the Lightning Greaves before going to combat, swinging her over Patrick for one commander damage, which has him cloaking the top card of Patrick's library. Fog plays a Force for turn before paying 3 in order to cast his commander, Best, before he then pays an additional 1 to cast Nimble Mongoose, putting a 1 1 counter onto his commander. Foil plays a Swamp for turn and then taps out to cast a Bone Offering, creating a 4-1 Skeleton Creature token. Patrick plays an Island for turn and then also taps out to cast Haldan, which has him going into his library to search for Paco to put into his hand. Ryan draws and plays a Thriving Morph for turn, choosing Islands, before once again going to combat, swinging a Trata over Patrick for 1 damage and cloaking the top card of his library. Fog draws and plays a Plants for turn before paying 1 for a Yotirian Frontliner, putting another counter onto his commander. He then also pays to cast an Orochi Leaf Caller, which puts another counter onto his commander. Fog then goes to combat, swimming his two available creatures over at Ryan. Ryan then decides to just chump block with the two cloaked creatures, returning him back to Patrick's graveyard. Foil plays another Swamp for turn and then casts a Solemn Simulacrum, which has him going into his library to get another mountain to put into play tapped. Patrick draws and then casts a Lotus Petal before tapping out and sacking the Lotus Petal in order to cast his commander, Calmax. Ryan plays an island for turn and then casts Coerce to kill targeting Fog's commander, and in response, Fog casts Generous Gift, destroying his own commander in order to get a 3-3 Elven token. Ryan then goes to combat, this time hitting Foil for 1 damage and cloaking the top card of his library. Fog plays a Plains for turn before paying 5 in order to cast his commander a second time. He then passes to Foil who plays a land for turn before paying 3 and casting a Convergence of Dominion. He then also casts him as Miric Orb and on his upkeep, Patrick mills 3 cards into his graveyard before drawing for turn. He then goes to combat swinging his commander over at Ryan who just chump blocks with Foil's cloaked creature. Ryan plays a Swamp for turn and then casts a Guild Swarm Prowler before equipping him with the Lightning Greaves. Ryan then decides to go to combat before he remembers he's supposed to mill cards on his upkeep so he untaps his creatures. Ryan then goes to combat once again, swinging his commander over at Foil for 1 damage while he swings his other creature over at Patrick. Foil then takes the damage and Ryan gets the top card of his library. Ryan's assassin then dies which has him drawing a card before he then pays 3 and casts a fabricate which has him going into his library to go find a masked nexus to put into his hand. Ryan then casts a Hired Poisoner before re-equipping his commander with the Lightning Greaves, and on his end step, Fog casts a Sundering Growth in order to destroy the Mesmeric Orb. This then has Fog populating his Elephant Token before he then untaps and draws for turn. He then pays 3 for your Temple is under attack, choosing himself and Foil to both draw 2 cards. Fog then casts an Avacyn's Pilgrim, putting a counter onto his commander, before he then casts a Drillwork Mole, putting another counter onto his commander. Foil draws for turn and then casts Combustible Gear Hulk, choosing Ryan, who then decides to have Foil draw three cards when he enters play. On his instep, Patrick casts Calibrated Blast, getting two copies, revealing the first copy, dealing four damage to Ryan's commander, sending him to the command zone. Before he then reveals the second card, also sending Fog's commander to the command zone. Patrick then untaps and draws for a turn before casting Rowan Scholar's Sparks, which has an uptick here in order to deal 1 damage to each of his opponents. Ryan plays a land for a turn before paying 5 in order to recast his commander a second time. 
He then once again equips her to lightning groups before going to combat swing both of his assassins over at Foil. Foil decides not to block and take the damage which has him cloaking the top two cards of his library. Fog draws and then goes to combat swing both of his elephants over at Ryan who just decides to take the damage and he passes. Foil plays an Urborg for turn before paying 3 and casting a Luminar Suzars. He then pays to cast an Imperial Recruiter which has him going into his library to get felled into the third path which he puts into his hand. On his inset, Fog casts Beast Within to destroy the Twinning Staff, and Patrick responds by deflecting it with the Deflecting Swap. The Sin has Patrick destroying Ryan's Lightning Greaves, giving him a 3-3 Beast token. Patrick then untaps Return and draws before playing a Halimer Depth, which has him rearranging the top 3 cards of his library. He then once again upticks Rowan, dealing 1 damage to each of his opponents before paying to cast a discounted Chandra's Incinerator. Ryan draws for turn and then casts the Maskwood Nexus before going to combat swinging all of his creatures except for Atrada over at Patrick. Patrick just takes a 10 damage before Ryan cloaks the top 5 cards of his library. Finally, Ryan casts Avon Heartstabber and passes his turn. Fog plays a Plains for turn before he once again pays to cast his commander a third time. On his instep, Foil pays to instant speed equip the Cranial Plate into his Imperial Recruiter. He then untaps and plays the Command Tower for turn before deciding to use Surge's ability in order to sacrifice the Combustible Gear Hulk, giving him 6 black mana. Foil then uses this mana to help him cast a Technomancer, which has him milling 3 cards into his library before he returns the Combustible Gear Hulk back into play. This time he chooses Fog, who has him milling 3 cards into his graveyard, which has him taking 7 damage. Foil then pays to cast his commander Mishra before also paying 3 to cast Felden. Patrick draws for turn and then taps out to cast a Bane fire where X is equal to 4 in order to destroy Atrada. After which he upticks Rowan once again dealing 1 damage to each of his opponents. This also has him dealing 1 damage from the incinerator to each one of his opponent's creatures sending 2 of the creatures to the graveyard. Ryan draws and then casts Ixodron draw in order to flip all the creatures in play upside down. In response, Fog pays to use the Drillwork Mole in order to put a counter onto his commander. After which, all the non-token creatures in play all get flipped upside down and he passes turn. Fog draws for turn before going straight to combat swinging all of his creatures over at Ryan. Ryan then declares blocks which has a good amount of creatures on both his and Fog's side of the board getting taken out before he then takes the remaining 7 damage. Foil draws and then plays a Swamp for turn before going to combat. The Sin has him justifyingly swinging all of its creatures but two over at Ryan. Ryan then blocks accordingly before taking the damage going down to 11 life, before Foil pays to cast the Altar of Ball from its adventure. He then pays 3 to use the Altar's ability, exiling his own commander in order to go into his graveyard and bring his Imperial Recruiter back into play. The Sin has Foil going into his library to get a Goblin Welder which he also pays to play. Patrick draws for turn and then emblems his planeswalker before passing turn. Ryan draws for turn and then pays to recast Atrada a third time. He then decides to go to combat swinging 5 of his creatures over at Fog, and in response Patrick casts a decoy gambit choosing one creature that each of his opponents control. Each opponent then decides to let Patrick draw a card before Fog takes his damage going down to 8 life and Ryan cloaks the top 5 cards of his library. Fog plays a Plains Return before then casting a Sin from Avernus where X is equal to 1. The Sin has him returning 6 of his creatures from his graveyard back into play before he exiles the spell and he pays 1 to cast a Beloved Princess. On his end step, Foil pays to use the Dominion in order to mill 3 cards into his graveyard. He then plays a Mount of Return before suspending a Lotus Bloom for 3. Foil then uses the Goblin Welder's ability in order to sacrifice his cranial plating, going to get a portal for Rexy from his graveyard to bring into play. When the portal enters play, each of his opponents then sack three of the creatures, before he then once again pays to use the Dominion and mills three more cards into his graveyard. Foil then pays to use the altar sacking a skeleton token in order to bring back the Kaldolta Forge Master from his graveyard back into play. He then goes to combat swinging three of his creatures over at Ryan who just takes the damage going down to 5 life. Patrick draws and plays a force for turn before paying 4 for an unexpected result, paying the additional 1 to copy it. He then shuffles up his library and presents cuts to foil who cuts his deck before revealing the top card of his library which is the Temple of Abandon which comes into play.
He then resolves his second copy which has him shuffling up his deck once again presenting cuts to Foil who cuts his deck before he reveals his surreal memoir off the top of his library. This then has him going and returning an instant card at random from his graveyard to his hand before he then goes to uptick Rowan dealing one more damage each of his opponents. Ryan draws for turn before paying to cast Ramsey's Assassin Lord. Ryan then goes to swing all out at Patrick who can't block and goes down to 10 life and then has Ryan cloaking the top 5 cards of his library. Fog draws for turn before paying to cast Bess a 4th time from the command zone. He then also pays to unearth his Yodian frontline which has him putting a 1-1 counter onto his commander. Fog then pays to cast an unnatural restoration, returning the drillwork mole from his graveyard back to his hand and proliferates a counter on his commander. Finally, Fog goes to combat, swinging the frontliner over Ryan and just chump blocks his creature and he passes his turn to Foil. Foil draws and unearths a royal warden, which has him creating two Necron warriors when it enters play. He then uses the Forge Master to sack the three artifact creatures that just came into play in order to go get a conjurer's closet from his library to put into play. Foil then goes to combat, swinging his three creatures over Ryan, who just chump blocks and sending them all to the graveyard. Foil then uses the altar to sack his recruiter in order to bring the combustible gear hook back into play a third time. This time when he enters play, Ryan chooses to live dangerously and has Foil milling the top three cards of his library into his graveyard. The Sin has Foil dealing enough damage to give Ryan an honorable death taking him out of the game. Finally, Foil casts a Yara Widow of the Realm as well as Slow Bad Iron Goblin. Patrick draws and then plays a mountain before casting an artifact mutation. He then targets the portal to Phyrexia. Foil then responds by using the Goblin Welder to sacrifice it in order to bring his Mystic Forge back into play from his graveyard. Patrick then creates some Sapperling tokens before once again casting the unexpected results. The Sin has him once again shuffling his library up in foil cutting before he reveals a crackling drake off the top of his library putting it into play. Sin has him drawing a card before he once again uptakes his planeswalker to deal a damage each of his opponents. Fog draws for turn and plays a forest. He then pays one to recast the drill work mold in order to put a counter onto his commander. He then goes to combat swinging all of his available creatures over at Foil, who decides to block his commander's slow bad before taking the rest of the damage going down to 10 life, while Fog gains 4 life going up to 10. On his instep, Foil uses the Mystic Forge losing a life to exile the top card of his library. He then draws for turn and plays a Terramorphic Expanse. Foil then casts a Price of Fame in order to destroy the Cackling Drake before he then surveils two cards, keeping one of the cards on top of his library. Finally, Foil pays to cast a Friction Flesh Gorger off the top of his library and he passes his turn. Patrick plays a Mount of Return before paying to flash back his Calibrated Blast and then an additional one to copy it. The Sin has him revealing the top card of his library dealing 5 damage to Foil before he reveals the second card dealing an additional 3, taking him down to 1 life. Patrick then upticks Rowan to deal 1 damage to each of his opponents, and in response, Foil sacks the Flesh Gorger to Yara. The Sin has Foil gaining 7 life while Patrick loses 7 life, keeping him in the game. He then casts an Arcane Signet before going to combat, swinging his Sapperlings over at Foil, who decides to block 2 of them and goes down to 4 life. Fog plays a Plains for turn before going to combat, swinging all of his creatures out at Foil. Foil then declares blocks on three of the creatures, before then using the Goblin Welder to sacrifice one of his creatures in order to bring the Portal to Phyrexia back into play. The Sin has each of his opponents sacking three creatures when it enters play, before he then also uses the Forge Master to sack three artifacts to get another artifact from his library. Then in a last ditch effort gets a Semblance Anvil which he brings into play as a copy of the Combustible Gear Hole. Bad, yes. Three, I need six, I, I know I have sixes. Oh. Yes! <laughs> so you take six. Yeah. And I take the damage. Yeah. The Sin has him dying to combat damage while Patrick untaps and draws return. The Sin has Patrick casting the Mirari Conjecture, returning the artifact mutation from his graveyard back to his hand. He then pays to cast the artifact mutation as well as an additional one to copy it. The Sin has him destroying Fog's Drillwork Mole as well as his own Arcane Signet so he can get three Sapperling blockers. Lastly, he upticks Rowan to deal one damage to Fog. 
Fog draws and then pays to cast Thirsting Roots, choosing to proliferate the counters on his commander. After which, he goes to combat, swinging all out of Patrick, who just blocks with all of his tokens. Patrick draws for turn and then upticks his Saga, returning the Bane Fire from his graveyard back to his hand, before he then upticks Roan to deal 1 damage to Fog, and he recasts the Bane Fire, winning him the game. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe in order to see more games and decks you would normally see in your average meta.